Hello, I'm Richard Herring. And I'm Abdullah Crowe. And this is Sight on Screen. So uh, Today, this week we're doing something a little episode. different. Yeah, we're doing something a little <laughs> different. It's a very special episode. It's uh, it's some news that came out about a week ago. Very surprising news uh, about a sequel from 1993 uh, to a very special and dear action movie starring Sylvester Stallone. Obviously, we're talking about Demolition Man. Oh, man. <laughs> Near and dear to our hearts, isn't it? Exactly. Sylvester Stallone so, trying out the 90s. Oh, God. And it was uh, Sandra Bullock's one of her first roles, wasn't it? At, at least time? certainly one of her first like leading roles. I think she'd done stuff before, but I think this is like her first time as like a headliner. Mm -hmm. And that got off so, I mean, uh, social distancing yeah, I mean, it's, type it, it, uh, high five. <laughs> Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. You know what? That it, that's slightly prescient now, isn't it? It is. It, it really it, is. Yeah. I think because I think this is her role before uh, Speed, actually. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is like one of my favorite all-time favorite action movies. By the way. Yeah, I love that movie. Speed. That movie's that movie is rocking. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. So about a week oh, ago, man. Sylvester Stallone confirmed that. Demolition Man 2 is in development. Now, Warner Brothers has not confirmed nor denied this since the announcement, and there hasn't been any official news, but uh, but yeah. It was Sylvester Stallone basically just saying, yes, we're working on it and it's looking good. <laughs> I think this is falls a little bit under the same place as Ghostbusters 3, where they had like an IMDB page for that for like years and years without any reason to. It's kind of like, yeah, we're working on it. It's fine. It's in pre-production. Yeah, that's what we'll call it. <laughs> sure it is. Sure. Yeah, no, I mean, Stallone, Stallone, Stallone said stuff like this before, though. Let's be honest. I mean, he, he is known for being a slightly... Then again, they did end up with that, that last Rocky movie and the last Rambo movie, so I guess he's kind of good for it. Yeah, I mean, they made the Creed sequels. Uh, Creed one yeah. and two. Uh, they have, and before that, obviously Rocky six, I believe, <laughs> which they also made. Uh, and then yeah, because they, they did. It, how did that work again? Rocky one, two, three, four, five. Rocky Balboa, Creed, yeah. Creed two. Exactly. And then there is uh, Rambo one, two, three, John Rambo, yeah. and then Rambo Last Blood. Yeah, where he kills Actually, Mexicans. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> Actually, the the first movie isn't even called Rambo, it was just called uh, First Blood. And First Blood Part the 1. Sequels, yeah, and then the sequels were the ones that uh, took the the name Rambo and made Yeah, cuz I, th I think what state. happened is and I love this. You you'll give me a second cuz I think I remember this right like there was this huge thing where it is First Blood, First Blood Part 2. Rambo 3 Roman numeral, mm -hmm. then we'd cut to either titled John Rambo or Rambo, depending if you're in Europe or the United States. Yes. <laughs> then followed by Rambo, the last, the, what was it? The, the last, last blood? blood. Yeah, last blood. Yes. A movie so bad, even the original writer of Rambo came out didn't to denounce it. <laughs> Well, I did read an interesting article that said, if you watch the extended cut, it's worth it. <laughs> oh my god, the extended cut of the last Rambo movie. Can you think of anything sad sadder? Um, you know, the ultimate cut of Batman v Superman? I don't know. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean, I remember, I remember that John Rambo movie so well, though, because it was the first appearance of what I have called Stallonenstein. Yeah, when he just, like, decimates people <laughs> I mean, no because he was like he, i think that was around the time they caught him in like australia with human growth hormone in his baggage or something like no we're, oh, we're, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. way beyond steroids oh yeah this yeah, was yeah, like no. the You're absolutely right You're absolutely right this and is like mental serum stuff oh god yeah. he just melted didn't he 
Yeah, um, <laughs> I do not envy him, to put it lightly. No, I, I mean, he has done it to himself, though, because you have also those Expendables movies, and you can, those, like, as they progress, you can see him, like, morphing. <laughs> That's one way to put it, yes. <laughs> I think the closest I could say is, like, if you took a, a, a candle that looked like uh, Sylvester Stallone and you put it under a heat lamp, and then you filmed it in slow motion. That has been the last 10 years of his career is watching the wax melt in on itself. <laughs> that's a very, uh, that's a very interesting imagery that you got there. <laughs> <laughs> Am I wrong though? Really? Come on. I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> no, you know, you're not wrong at all. Actually. That's uh yeah, that's uh, oh, God. He, like you said, he's been doing that to himself. Uh, to, if we're going to be fair. And, um, you know, yeah. he seems to be okay with it. So, yeah. <laughs> sure. I mean, I, he, he seems to be a confident man, a confident man who can't move his face very much anymore. But yeah. Yeah. yeah no, if you thought 90s and 80s Stallone couldn't talk, oh, 2000 <laughs> Stallone, oof. <laughs> and 2010 Stallone. You, what Stallone. we really need, 2010 Stallone or 2020 Stallone. You know what we need? We need a new Halloween sequel where instead of Jason, we have just Stallone looking the way he does now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just the movie monster chasing kids around with a machete. Yeah. And it has no to be explanation. A like Rambo style. Oh, machete. yeah. Just... <laughs> he keeps you throwing knives at people going, Cobra! But. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Sorry, we got very quickly distracted on this one. Tangent aside, tangent aside. Yeah, so, sequel gets announced. We saw Demolition Man together recently, not too long ago. And yes, it was did. almost like a new viewing, because I the last time I saw it was so long ago that all I remembered were, you know, the most iconic sequences, like the Mamba Jamba. Oh yeah, and uh, and the uh, the most <laughs> elaborate and expensive Taco Bell commercial ever made. Oh, that was pretty no. much what I remembered of it. <laughs> or, or as I experienced one time, Pizza Hut commercial. Yes, absolutely right. And we, we'll we watched it. the Pizza Hut version, did we not? We yes. did. It was great. We watched the Pizza Hut <laughs> version, which is the European version. Because <laughs> I had the I had the European version of this, and I'm the one who brought the movie. And oh oh no! Oh god! It's something else. That I mean, ADR but here's the thing: I remember. <laughs> oh, wasn't it? Because I remember. I this is one of those movies I watched a ton. Because back in the day, we had Sky movies, mm -hmm. and the two movies Sky movies loved to play was this and Assassins, which oh, is Stallone and movie. Antonio Banderas. Yes, that's a fantastic movie. I think like every evening they played one of the two. So I watched this movie like 50 times just, or like little pieces of it over and over again. Yeah. I think I've so there are seen whole... it like three times altogether and both like twice oh, when I was much, much younger and I probably shouldn't mm. have been seeing it. And then once when we saw it together again, oh, God. I have whole segments of this movie locked in my head. I like the same with Antonio Banderas, like just chewing scenery in that other one. Mm -hmm. and peeing, at, peeing in a bottle that that completely oh, yeah. comes out of nowhere when he just like he's looking through a scope and then out of completely nowhere he just jumps up in this like frenzy and starts peeing in a bottle. <laughs> it's not even set no, up. No, or no, anything. That's not what <laughs> oh no, 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 that's you're 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 misremembering slightly. He he's there and he 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 he's fighting with himself and he needs to and he needs to and then he decides to pee in the bottle and then like halfway through he thinks he sees the target, so he has a panic attack while he's peeing in a bottle. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right. Oh, my God. <laughs> so, he, so he, like, jumps to his feet, and he's wrestling with the rifle, and then it's not the person anymore, and, he, and, and he's, like, spilled himself all over. It's just the worst image. <laughs> it's it's like you're on a long-haul trip, and you're peeing in a bottle in the car, and the cop pulls you over. It is that reaction. Oh, good God. And he is covered in sweat because he's like in the middle of the heat in some South American country. I think he's in Panama. It's yeah. so funny. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, when just when you thought that Antonio Banderas couldn't get more wet, <laughs> <laughs> yes, just when you thought he couldn't get more wet, and oh. then Zorro comes out 
And by God. Oh, yeah. oh boy. Yeah, there's there's some sweaty Antonio Banderas for you. Very greasy. Very sexually oh, charged. So greasy. That whole movie is just... <laughs> so Who was greasier? Him or, him or Anthony Hopkins? Oh, that's a good question. <laughs> I think, I think um, Anthony Hopkins has to take that one. Because they just caked them, really... they caked them with so much makeup. <laughs> that, so much makeup and so much long hair product. Oh, yeah. I, I still, a, I mean, job. like, mm, how much extensions is happening here? And how much grease uh, are you using to hide it? <laughs> yeah, and then, you know, they have to make him look slightly brown because, you know, it's a film from that era of the early 2000s. Oh, God. I, and, I mean, here's uh, the thing. I and, think I'm... And we we just gotten yeah, over go blackface, for... and now it was brownface. Oh, <laughs> so... no. I mean, because Antonio <laughs> Banderas... We're, we're Antonio going. Banderas... Oh, God, we really are. Antonio Banderas looked like he'd been in the sun too long. Anthony Hopkins mm -hmm. looked like if you fried him lightly and just drizzled <laughs> him with salt, he would be delicious. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, perfectly aged meat. <laughs> yeah, you just wanted to throw that man in a pan and just give him a couple of flips, because he looked so oiled. <laughs> do you believe that that was garlic butter or what kind of butter oh. do you <laughs> spirit considering anthony hopkins now definitely garlic butter oh yes <laughs> oh, how do we get to this we are how? we are roasting these people so hard <laughs> no we're pan frying them let's be honest no, but... that's true. that is true that's very true <laughs> I, I think this bodes well for the rest of the episode because this movie just, it, there's so much to talk about and already we're off topic. Yeah. So let's, <laughs> uh, let's start with a little bit of a tangent aside and let's start with a little uh, bit of plot details. Aside. Okay. So, so uh, the let's, original let's just open up. Map. Yeah. So it's, I think it, the film is from 1994. It's, uh, but the, it says 1993 here, but I, maybe it was released. Yeah. But the film is set in 1996 to begin with so two years in the future yeah. and the hollywood sign is on fire uh very much in the same vein of uh, uh in terms of the, like the fire scene very much in the same vein of uh, what do you call it uh crow the, the first crow movie it reminded me a bit yeah. of that when they had hell night and the whole city is burning <laughs> Yeah, I mean, this movie's kind of a weird mixture of, like, it, it's doing the 90s thing, like The Crow, and yet there's several, like, instances of uh, that are straight out of Escape from New York. Mm -hmm. It's got a weird kind of mixed tone. It's trying to drag the 80s into the 90s. Yeah, uh, kind of actually more Escape from L.A., because it's very whimsical as well at some times. So it's like oh, a, it's yeah, like a no, you're right, Escape yeah. from L.A. Which was, uh, oof. What a movie. But with more Nazi uniforms. Yes. <laughs> and the good guys are wearing the Nazi uniforms, which is amazing. Yeah, oh, that, yeah, because they are clearly fascists. Because <laughs> we're the good guys. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I love the fact that the, oh, like, okay, so we'll, we'll get there, we'll get there. But, so we start in 1996. L.A. is on fire, apparently. And we are introduced to Sylvester Stallone, who is a cop wearing a beret. Oh, yes. Oh, the red beret. It, he, Amazing. The, the, no, the black beret. Ah, uh, is it black? When does he wear the red? Ah, uh, yes, uh, yes, that's a, that's a black he's beret. He's not You're French absolutely, Legion. Absolutely right. <laughs> he has like oh, a... Man. Don't you just want that now? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> I, I want Sylvester Stallone playing a Frenchman. I want that here, what that accent oh, God, would sound yes. like. Yes, that would be amazing. Actually, let's do it for Demolition Man too. Uh, yeah, bon jour. Bon, bon jour. <laughs> let's say that that you know the the unfreezing process a second time kind of twisted his uh, his circuit boards inside his oh, head, yeah. and now no, he's no, he, French. He, he, he got yeah, he got the special programming, so he is now like a cordon bleu chef. Yeah, <laughs> just like uh, Snipes. <laughs> oh God, yeah. Which, which we'll get to. We'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get there. We'll get there. So, yeah, black. But yeah, so we have absolutely right. Black beret, ultra tight t shirt, and bungee jumping? Because, um, yeah. He bungee jumps out of a helicopter going, Phoenix! Which is just like, <laughs> yes. it's oh, such movie. a way to open a movie. <laughs> yes. It's just kind oh, of like, God. okay, so what is, we're watching a movie, great, LA's on fire, fantastic. Hey, look at Sylvester Stallone, Phoenix! I'm like, okay, movie. <laughs> All right. Calm down. <laughs> Phoenix. You, you've played several cards very early. Let's see where you go with this. Oh, yeah. And this movie does not let up. It's uh, it's 110% oh, God, it just... all the time. Yeah. So we, we jump straight into an action sequence, which is pretty much just someone playing Hitman with, with cheat codes on. 
Okay, that's an interesting way of explaining it, sure. Because <laughs> he's just running, like, people are firing machine guns at this man, and he's not exactly a small target, but it nothing's hitting him, and he's just whacking people in the face. He's not even shooting anybody. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, he's he's a good guy. <laughs> he's a good guy. He can't be indiscriminately yeah. murdering poor people in Los Angeles. What is this, police? <laughs> Ah, uh, so true. Um, before we go any further, mm. we have to talk about the names. So we did mention oh, Phoenix. Oh God, yeah. That's that's the that's the antagonist, Simon Phoenix. Simon Phoenix and John Spartan. The most glorious of names for a protagonist ever created. Oh, ever. isn't it just John it's, Spartan? <laughs> and it's no one in the movie just says it casually. Nobody just says, "Hey, John." It's like it's John Spartan. <laughs> They were, they, so, they were so proud of that name that they were like, they had to use it at any given moment. John Spartan. Yeah, and it, like, they, they say the full name, and they always say it with like serious import. I think five separate characters all say it. John Spartan? Yeah, no, with authority. Dun, dun, dun. Like, John Spartan. Oh, yeah, no. Even Dwesley Snipes just goes, John? John Spartan? Yeah. <laughs> that, that guy? Wow. Oh, Can we just... Can we all just appreciate Wesley Snipes as a villain? A villain. I mean, properly, properly evil in this. Yeah, it's they don't. Awesome. They don't even try to give him a, a motivation. They just like this is the this is the antagonist, and he is an antagonist. End of story. <laughs> no depth needed. Hello, we took. No, I mean we took one of the best action actors we had. We gave him this amazing, like top bright yellow afro. <laughs> Differently colored eyes and the trousers we stole from Beetlejuice. Go right. forth. And it's not just that he's like the, the bright yellow shortcut afro, but it's also stylized, so it has like edges to it. Good God. Edges and a flat top. It's it's such a look. It is. Oh my God. Glorious is the only words to describe it. Oh, and his performance is just out of this world. Because oh, like, yeah. we have Spartan. He was loving Spartan every fights. minute of that. Oh, God. He was having so much fun. Because uh, Sylvester Stallone fights his way to the top of this building and tries to have a dramatic standoff. But what you're actually watching is a very Italian-looking statue and Wesley Snipes dancing circles around it. Mm -hmm. Because, oh, my God, can you tell the difference in acting ability right here? Oh, God, yes. Oh, Lord. I... I, I because Stallone isn't a terrible actor by this point in his career. I mean, he's actually got better with time. He's a lot like Schwarzenegger. They got better with age uh, to a certain point, and then the surgeries happened. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Snipes is just dancing around him through this entire film. Oh, yeah. No, and, because, and, he, I mean, and he's got such charisma. I mean, Wesley Snipes in and of oh. himself has an amazing charisma. But for this Oh, yeah. I mean, this man went to prison for tax and then came back and had a career. Yeah, you can't say no to Snipes. You just can't. Dolomite, holy shit, he's good in that. Yeah. That was an Oscar snub, if I've ever seen one. Oh, God, really was, should wasn't it? Least, that should have that was been just nominated. a tragedy. Should have at least I mean, if you were going to put... Oh, yeah. I mean, if you were going to put the Irishman in there, which I love, but still, I mean, you could have given Dolomite something. If nothing else, there was like five people in that movie who desire deserved a Best Supporting Actor nomination. Yeah. Not even like not even joking. Like that movie had some incredible acting. Oh yeah, and just across the board, it's the best Snipes has been in forever. Really, pretty yeah. much in anything. It might actually be one of his best roles ever. Yeah, was I'm like trying a, to think of what he's done better. Role. Yeah, I mean, I, he hasn't been better since King of New York. I mean, he was just knocking that out of the park for sure. But uh, here we have Snipes, the, who is just. Cackling up a storm. Yes, and uh, like we said, he's he is and he's a villain for villainy's sake. Oh yeah, <laughs> and he's having so much fun with it. He's like, like you were saying, dancing around Spartan, and <laughs> and uh, I mean, just the quips. It's like something out of uh, it's like something out of Deadpool or something. Yeah, I I, I think the closest I could say is kind of like it, it's like they watched different movies to prepare. Stallone just watched other Stallone movies. No. I'm almost convinced Wesley Snipes was watching Jack Nicholson as the Joker. Yeah. Because he's like, he's a comic book villain in this. He is just all over the shop. He is eating the scenery. 
Yeah, very good comparison, actually. And what? it fits the movie I... better. Red and greeny. <laughs> My favorite song for the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I love that shit. <laughs> oh, no. It's so funny. Just like, wait, what? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when you're wa- when you're watching that first Batman movie and Prince comes on the soundtrack, it really is a real moment of I'm sorry, wait, what? <laughs> exactly, it's, it ca- catches you off guard every time, even when you know it's coming. It just still even when you, you know it's guard. coming, like why? The two the shots of the movie is so like dark and brooding and and uh, actually incredibly well made, and then all of a sudden Prince comes on. <laughs> well, his soundtrack comes on. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah, it's background as one of the producers yeah, wrestled Tim Burton to the ground the so they could make that scene happen. Job, though. He really, he really went for it. I think that that one catches. Me. Oh yeah, he brought his A game. I mean, the two shots that always surprise me is that one and the weird cutaway yes, to that is a good uh, one. Michael That's Keaton really hanging good, upside uh, down, like split second scene, blink and you'll miss that kind of thing. And it's such a good shot too. Yeah, and you're like, wait, what? He left a, a woman it's in a, it's bed such a to good go way to hang upside down. Uh, wait, what? You know, Bruce Wayne as a character, uh, where he's so uncomfortable in social situations, and he's such he, he's such a loner, <laughs> and he's so he, his like Bruce Wayne is the persona. Batman is yeah. the uh, is the real him, and so even when he's trying to sleep, he can't help but hang upside down. The real him. <laughs> I just love this moment because, like, you just hear that the, the woman yeah, wakes up, slightly, a little looks bit over, and all you just hear this creaking. <laughs> and the thing that must have happened, what must have happened, is she looked over, he woke up, looked at her, and went, "I'm not Batman." And then we kept going yes. with the movie. Smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. Yeah. Cute and cuddly boys, cute and cuddly. Smoke and mirrors. Uh, no, but Wesley oh, yeah. Snipes. Oh, he makes the movie. Wesley Snipes is the best part of this. He is this movie. He wouldn't work. It would not have worked with it. Yeah, because like, like I said, like, there is no performance. Like there, there is no like character there. It's just it. It almost feels like it was ad libbed the whole way through by Wesley, because because there's 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 nothing that really motivates the character. Oh other yeah, than no, it, it, mayhem, and it's just his performance that makes it so interesting. I mean, he uh, the, we open with the fact that Spartan is or Stallone is trying to save thirty hostages that were taken from a bus. And the reason Snipes has kidnapped them is not for money. It's because he doesn't like yep. the bus drivers <laughs> driving into his part of LA. I almost forgot about that. That was the reason. That's exactly right. He is just wonder. Yeah, he's got his own. Yeah, he's like I. Uh, he's like the bu- postman figured it out. Cops figured it out, but the goddamn <laughs> bus drivers just wouldn't listen. And you're oh, like, God. what am I watching? <laughs> This man murdered 30 people because he didn't like the municipal like, bus protest. system. This is what? my way of protesting. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's a hell of a protest. And then he just covers yeah, his old hideout a, in gasoline. About anyway. Yeah, I mean, th- this is bizarre. It's like you took a Marvel villain and gave them the like moral compass of a Bond yeah, villain. Bond you villain. don't know where this guy's going. Oh, yeah, like Goldfinger, but with less, yeah. less morals and more gasoline. A lot more gasoline. <laughs> And then, uh, and then you know he he kills the thirty hostages. Spartan somehow gets blamed for this, mm. uh, and they're both sent to prison. Yes. And in nineteen ninety six, apparently, uh, only two years after. Uh, yeah, no, no. that's why. Riley prison. Nineteen ninety six. We're no longer just yeah. people in prison. No, no, no. We're freezing them for life sentences because that's how they learn about. You know, remorse. I don't know. I don't know what that's supposed to prove, but it's something. <laughs> I, 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 I'm pretty sure we were just gonna get, like use more death penalty at this right? point. This black man took over LA. They're they're just not putting him in a piece of yeah, ice. I they're mean, doing something worse. That man didn't make it I mean, to the, the Black president. Panthers. Went in with a relatively peaceful protest with guns in capital in the Capitol building in Los Angeles. <laughs> And that's when Los Angeles, yeah. by the way, having Ronald Reagan be their uh, their uh, governor at the time, they made they had oh, the God, strictest yeah. gun control laws because of that, mm-hmm. and they've held it they've held it ever since. <laughs> Pretty much. And so, if if this man did anything then, even yeah. remotely close to what they're representing in this movie, oh by God, they would reinstate the death penalty <laughs> just for him. 
Oh, I mean, but here, here's the weird part is that it's slightly prescient because the cops are showing up in Humvees. They predicted the militarization mm. of the police department. No, no, this 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 movie, this movie actually does it's a like, pretty good job oh. of predicting uh, the future. There's there's quite a, there's quite a few things. Yeah, it's, it's not actually quite terrible, a few things that it gets bizarrely. pretty good. Uh, okay, so we have Cryo Prison, and then we have my favorite instance in almost all of cinema, which is the moment where you can see Sylvester Stallone panicking because he thinks he's about to be drowned in the Yeah, lubricant. yeah, what a glorious scene! Oh my god, I love that scene so much. So we have naked, naked Sylvester Stallone put into a cryo chamber thing, at which point they add in some kind of sci-fi ultra icing mechanism thing. I don't know what to call this. Uh, you're and good this super freezes everything? Yeah, apparently it can go to zero Kelvin in like a few seconds, and therefore people survive. In, yeah. Uh, which also doesn't make sense, but sure, why not? No. I mean, and, and you're watching Sylvester Stallone clearly, like, bouncing around in a tub of KY. And he 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 honestly looks frightened during this scene. It's kind of like there, there's something happening in his eyes that isn't acting, I don't <laughs> think. Yeah. And it, it just gets so ridiculous. But anyway, yeah, so they super freeze him. We don't get to see Wesley Snipes being super frozen, and that's a travesty. In yeah, my because we get full frontal of, uh, well, almost full frontal of Stallone. Damn near. <laughs> it's just ever so slightly blurry. But you can pretty much see <laughs> what you need to see. Oh, yeah. And then we end up with the best thing of all, which is naked Stallone figurine. Like, they've made an actual life-size, like, model of him in this w ice cube and the best part is his face is clearly going yeah, yeah. <laughs> like the weirdest expression on his face and you actually told me that i didn't know and his this. mouth is going to the one side yeah like just mm. like the real him <laughs> and you, you told me that i didn't actually know but that was actually sold at auction wasn't it no it was at, this is from a separate source this is from a uh, it's actually from another podcast where they were talking about this because one of the people on we hate movies of which i'm a big fan oh yeah had seen the prop being used in planet hollywood in myrtle beach florida yeah which he owned at one point didn't he before it got back him jackie chan and schwarzenegger yeah 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 were like the big investors so yeah they just took the prop from the movies and put them into these planet hollywoods so in in apparently Myrtle Beach, Cal Myrtle Beach, Florida, hanging above the main reception desk was this model Jesus. of naked Sylvester Stallone. You're like, oh no! <laughs> oh man, I would have loved to have seen that live. <laughs> uh, just for the sheer bizarre uh, experience. But yeah. So no, but this this movie, you know, you mentioned this movie actually predicted quite a few things. Um, for one, uh, the political career of uh, Schwarzenegger. Mm. They they mentioned that in the future scenes when uh, that he's. Oh yeah, President Schwarzenegger. Yeah, exactly. Uh, which was uh, they, the, they added the Schwarzenegger the, presidential. Yeah, library. they added like the sixty-something amendment or something like that, where foreigners can run for presidency all of a sudden. <laughs> they, they mentioned that in the movie, which is amazing. Oh, <laughs> and if anyone was to like to be president, what's, what's it's, special? It's gonna be Schwarzenegger, obviously. <laughs> oh man, if you want some Corona lift up in these times, find his little videos he's posting of him and his like donkey and his miniature pony hanging out in their house. Of course, you'd have that. Why wouldn't you have that? He has a miniature pony called Whiskey, and it's like just him eating lunch and like vegan lunch and feeding carrots to a pony. God. It's like, what am I God. watching? Yeah. Well, he's chewing on a cigar. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago that Anthony Hopkins, you know, speaking of Anthony Hopkins, that we mentioned him earlier, uh, also did like some really weird set of videos. It was it was right around the when Kevin Spacey and the Me Too movement was happening, and Anthony Hopkins had a string of videos. Of just the weirdest mm. facial expressions and dances that just like completely out of nowhere, <laughs> and he just posted them online for no reason. Well, everybody's going kind of nuts. Who, who was the one that I saw? Also, Stanley Tucci was teaching people how to b make drinks from what they had left in the fridge. <laughs> We're living in a in a time, that's for certain. Oh, uh, we really are. My God, yeah. but yeah, no, uh, Schwarzenegger is great. Corona entertainment value. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, another thing that this movie predicted, if I remember correctly, were like self-driving cars, mm -hmm. yep. uh, video calls, 
uh, which weren't oh, a thing. One of which is time. one of which is certainly worth mentioning. We'll we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure they had tablets, which is really interesting. Yes, they do. Yeah, they they really and do. So, so yeah, this movie predicted a ton of things. So kudos. Yeah, to and it. There, there's also the there's a weird little like side bit where someone answers a phone call by going, "Hello, you have reached the San Angeles Police Department. If you would prefer an automated response, please press one." <laughs> yeah, if you would prefer an automated, that's uh, that's actually very good commentary on on the world today because right now it's all automated, yeah. whether you want to or not. Pretty much. God. I mean, all of that okay. stuff was kind of starting in the 90s already, but yeah, no, I mean, they didn't do a terrible job. No, no, I think they did a pretty decent job. And yeah, because obviously, what, you know, what about year is it, 2049? Um, let me see. Let me look it up real quick. Uh, the year that they wake up is 2032. Yeah, because uh, okay, so we'll 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 get to the interesting ones, but so just so to set it up, we're in 2032. And we are joined by Lenina Huxley. Yeah, that Huxley, as in uh, the author Huxley, because of course. Yeah, I mean, like all of all of the major like characters are named after some kind of uh, like sci-fi author or something. Oh, okay, yeah, all right, that's pretty cool. I don't know about that. Yeah, no, it's just like a little thing that everyone does. Or you also have Warden William Smithers, which is actually the name of the guy from Simpsons. William Smithers, I yeah, think. Yeah, that's true. Played by uh, at one point at least, uh, Andre Gregory or Gregory. Uh, yes, who, Andrew Gregory. Yeah, who there's a movie of which I really want you to see, <laughs> but it's, it's a bit of a weird one, which is uh, My Dinner with Andre. Oh, okay. And uh, it's him. Oh, and, yes, yes, yes. You've mentioned this. Yeah, it's him, and then the guy from uh, Princess uh, Princess Bride. Uh, what was his name? Uh, Wallace. Sean Wallace. Oh, Sean Wallace Sean. Yeah, yeah. And it's them two talking for about two hours, and that's the whole movie. <laughs> Fair <laughs> <So> enough. Glorious. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Uh, <laughs> but back, tangent aside, <laughs> back to the... <laughs> tangent aside, so many tangents in this one. But yeah, no, we, we wake up in movie. the 2032, and it's... Oh, God. And it's Lenina Huxley, played by San, Sandy Bullock, and she, the way everyone talks in this movie takes a bit of getting used to. Yeah, to put it lightly, it's very off-putting the minute that they move on to the to the future scenes, which is actually kind of interesting that they did that. Because it kind of puts you in that yeah. same disoriented feel as the protagonist, which is actually quite a clever little uh, trick. Yeah, because everyone's talking in this kind of weird, quote-unquote, future way, where it's like this idea of, like, um, what was what's a thing from the beginning? Uh... I have called to query you on the prison population. Does the tedium continue? Does the tedium continue? Yeah. <laughs> God. And the an the answer she receives is, your question is as amusing as it is irrelevant. <laughs> oh, it's like, okay. Lovely. Absolutely lovely. A much better job than After Earth. Let's just put oh it that way. Oh my God, yes. Ooh, that tried, ooh, that ooh, tried ooh. to do some future oh, speech. Yeah. And that didn't work at all. <laughs> I've got to tell you, when the movie you compare yourself to the movie Demolition Man and you come off looking way the worse, good grief, well done, Shyamalan. <laughs> oh my god, yes. Uh, and he never disappoints. He always brings his A game. <laughs> M Knight. I love you, man. Always <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, M Knight really just has a passion for really just picking the, like it, it's great. It's like you expect him to like stand at an airport and say, "I want to get on that flight," and then you watch it crash as he gets on. Yeah, it's just uh, reliable. And and the the worst part of it is when he was making smaller budget movies, most of them were really good, especially the one starring Bruce Willis. I guess. Oh you know, yeah. And I actually like Science too. I think science is all right. I'm not a I'm not a huge Mel Gibson fan, but I'll I'll get on board for that. I really liked um, Unbroken. Is it called Unbreakable? Yeah, Unbreakable. That's, that's the one. Movie. That's a great little movie. Mm. Glass. Uh, not one so of much. My, one of my no Glass was oof, that was mm -hmm. boy. Do I regret watching that movie? Yeah, I'm talking about I'm ruining paying, something. Paying money, paying money to watch that movie. Oh God, you paid <laughs> oh money God. to watch that? Jesus. Yeah, because I was so excited after seeing. Split, and you know, having mm. seen Unbreak Unbreakable, 
and both of those were really good, especially yep. the former. So oh yeah, uh, so so yeah, I was excited for Glass, and then boy, did that disappoint. Yeah, that just was. You could watch you, again. You could watch watch the airplane falling out of the sky. Yeah, my God. Not so, to mention Last Airbender. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Speaking I of paid Shyamalan money to movies, watch that. Me too. I watched it in three D. Oh, oh, God, I, oh so wow! Bad. Oh, I didn't do that. Thank God. I can't even imagine the headache. Oh man, it was it was bad. But uh, but yeah, tension. <laughs> so so we aside. wake up. So wake up in twenty thirty two. We wake up in twenty thirty two, and so does Simon Phoenix. Yes, it starts out with the waking of the criminal as opposed to the hero. Yes. Who affects his both immediate... Them, like, uh, oh, yeah, lifetimes. Whatever. But, um, yeah, they got lifetime sentences to pair of them, I think, for some reason. Even though when you see yeah. when you see the, the rap sheet for Wesley Snipes, it is just the length of him. It is just endless. <laughs> yeah. And then Spartan, basically, because he was somehow responsible for the 30... Yeah, because people. I they, still they, don't quite how um, they blew up the building, which featured yeah. the fantastic image of uh, Sylvester Stallone just like football tackling Wesley Snipes out a window <laughs> yeah. from the top floor, and they survive. Well done. Of course, this is action in the nineties. Why wouldn't they survive? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, you don't also don't see how they survived. It just they just do, and uh, apparently. The dead bodies of all the people from the hostages were in the building, but the police think they were alive. And then Snipes accuses Stallone of having done it intentionally. Yeah, yeah, that's what it was. And no one investigates, no one cares to even question the word of a serial murderer, a mass nope. murderer, in fact. They just believe yeah, him, no, and he... then they sentence Stallone to multiple life sentences. Yeah, because I think I think Wesley Snipes is credited with like a hundred murders or something. It's like an insane number. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's life in '96 apparently. Yeah, so apparently uh, Stallone or not Stallone, but Snipes got parole first. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, immediately affects his escape by the amazing line. Like where Andre Gregory looks at him and says, "Do you have something to say?" And so, <laughs> Snipes just goes, "Yeah." I do. Teddy bear. And everything goes to shit. <laughs> yes, and that's the level of insanity from Wesley Snipes' performance in this movie. It's absolutely amazing. Yeah, because apparently Teddy Bear unlocks everything? That's yeah. the, the, that's the voice-activated cuffs? No key or anything? Nope. Why is there an ice cream truck? What the oh, actual... Yes. And I can hear it, too. Oh yeah, no, there's an ice cream truck that just drove by out of tune, out of key, it's music juddering, and I almost expect to hear the police behind it how questionable that thing looked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all poor effect in motion. All right. Uh, yeah, no, we'll, that, we'll it, that, that, that was honestly the shady that that was the shady no, let's keep that in. No, the shadiest okay. ice cream truck in the world just drove past. Good lord. <laughs> oh no, we're keeping this in. Oh yeah. All right, all right, all right. These are corona times. We, we, people we're need the entertainment. We're unfiltered. <laughs> unfiltered, much like Stallone drowning in lube. Yes, because no one can convince me that that wasn't just buckets and buckets of lube. <laughs> I I want it to be true so badly. <laughs> yes, yeah. so Teddy Bear. Yeah, no, so, uh, Snipes wakes up. And then kill spree, kill spree, kill spree, resulting in the weirdest scene in the film almost, which is all these police officers standing around going, wait, what happened? Right. <laughs> when, when he goes on the, the, the telephone and he tries to call someone <laughs> and then everyone just stops there and be like, oh, hey, God, yes. Uh, yeah. What do we say in this situation? <laughs> everyone is like, uh, <laughs> what do we do? You know, one of the one of them talks to his little iPad thing, and it says, "Tell the maniac to get on the ground." <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes, "Simon Phoenix, get on the ground." And Simon and Wesley Stein just looks at him and goes, "No." <laughs> and then he says, "What was it?" He, he says, "Maniac is unresponsive." And the response, add the words or else. <laughs> and you're like, okay. 
<laughs> or else. Because we keep cutting back to the control center, which is uh, Bullock Benjamin Brad, who's great, great oh, in this. Oh, yeah. And Bob Gunton, th this this who was is the, the guy? movie. This was the movie. I'm sorry, I have to mention this. That this was the movie that sparked oh, yeah, go for it. the incredible chemistry between Benjamin Bratt and Sandra Bullock that we saw in Miss Congeniality. I knew you were going to go there. Yeah, I yeah. kind of like that movie. But yes, yeah, no, they're great, great movie. in this. It's, it's very much a guilty pleasure. It's a great movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, because here's the weird thing, which is that I would say Wesley Snipes isn't in this movie. He's doing the thing where he's in a different movie. Stallone doesn't really know what's happening around him and is just kind of going to everything. <laughs> Sandra Bullock yeah. and, and Benjamin Bratt know what kind of movie they're in. I think they're the only ones. You can maybe argue Rob Schneider knows what kind of movie he's in, but then again, that's how he acts in every movie. So, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, that weasel doesn't deserve any credit. <laughs> <laughs> He gave us uh, Bigelow, Male Gigolo, whatever the movie's called. Yes, uh, yeah. yes, sure. I'm, he gave us that. I don't think I don't think you can convince me to say it that way. I think he punished us with that. <laughs> oh, Rob Schneider. No, you have. Yeah, Sandra Bullock knows what kind of movie she's in. She's hitting all her beats. Her jokes are great. They're real. Her little like, she has this thing where she keeps misquoting action lines. Which is hysterically funny because she's selling it like a champ. Mm. We we're gonna show him. We're gonna really lick his ass. <laughs> yeah, and then Stallone's reaction to every single one of those. Oh, oh yeah, oh, and, and then you just have him going like, "Oh yeah, no, he came by again." I, I I keep waiting for someone to like take a pot shot at him. I think he's trying to lure the children, but um, no, you have Stallone. Stallone is just kind of going like. He's going to kick his ass. And then I mean, she has so many ass. great ones. Uh, you going to kick his ass. Kick. Kick his ass. Yeah. Uh, we got to. Oh, yeah. We're, my favorite one, though, is like, she goes, all right, let's go down there. Let's go blow this guy. <laughs> yes. Hey, actually, we're going to blow this guy away. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's it, well, it's a dumb gag, but it works. Yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah that's the whole yeah, point. Of, well, the, the whole thing is like, this is a sissy Mary society where uh, there is no murder, there is no violence, nobody eats unhealthily, and swearing is illegal. Yeah, it's a very different take to 1984. Let's put it like that. Yeah. For a dystopian future, this is a very different take of a dystopian future. It's 1984 if 1984 was designed and constructed by Disney. Yeah, pretty much. That's a good one. I gotta wonder what Alex Jones thinks about this. He's like, look, yeah, see what I mean? Yeah. I can't do it now. It's showing impression. Snowflakes. But... Snowflakes. Uh, yeah, it's snowflakes. very Fox News, this. <laughs> yeah. In a world where uh, no one has any guns, a black man can run ragged. <laughs> oh my god, no. That's awful. <laughs> oh. Does this lead us into the museum scene? Yeah, Wesley Snipes goes on kind of an action spree. It's pretty great. He's just throwing people around like it's nobody's business, uh, which leads to Rob Schneider's like only good line in this movie. Or no, he has two good lines. He has the first one, which was the, uh, if you prefer an automated response, and him just looking at the camera pretty much going, wait a second, we're police officers. We're not trained to handle this kind of violence. <laughs> yes. It's like, um, okay, Rob. Fine, I'll I'll give you that. Yeah, oh no, no. yeah, and line. this that that leads us pretty much into the museum scene, where we've got Look, John I still Spartan. Don't understand. I still don't understand why those why the weaponry was loaded and why the pins weren't taken out of them. Yeah, <laughs> like why are they so still usable? The only the only place you can get a gun in this society anymore is in a museum. Fine, funny, ha ha, great. But why on earth is it just an armory's worth of ammunition stored alongside them? <laughs> I don't know. And, and why a working is... cannon? Oh my god, it's a working. Oh, cannon. the working cannon was great. Like, who packed that with gunpowder before they put it on an exhibit? Really? Oh man, oh. amazing. Also, the fact that the like the safety glass they're using is clearly breakable. It's. You know what I mean? It's kind of like, mm, no, this, this, this is this. You could you could get better safety materials here. 
especially in the year 2032. You know, you think yeah, if you have a laser gun, thing. which does show up. Oh yeah, yeah, laser guns are, I are mean, part of us. We get a plasma cannon later. Come on, and uh, which is just amazing. <laughs> which does lead to my favorite exchange in the movie, though, which is uh, this guy walking up to Wesley Snipes and says, uh, "Good evening, sir. What seems to be your boggle?" To which Wesley Snipes replies, "What do you weigh?" and throws this man through a window. Yeah. Because that's exactly how physics work. <laughs> yeah, I mean, let's be honest. If someone walked up to me wearing a kimono and said, what seems to be your boggle, sir? I can think of no more appropriate a response. <laughs> how much I want to demonstrate that fool. <laughs> how much do you weigh? Oh. How much do you weigh? And I love the fact he doesn't even wait for the answer. He just literally just picks the... Wesley Snipes is superhuman in this yeah, movie. I was about he just to say, is we hucking people that. all over the shop. We need to mention that he, uh, what was it? Uh, the explanation was that he, that they pretty much like Matrix programmed him essentially before yes. they unfreeze them. And and why that translates to him having superhuman strength, I don't know. <laughs> but he also well, has I mean, have you looked at this guy? He is ripped. <laughs> That's true. He is pretty ripped. He is so movie. jacked in this movie. I mean, I would argue Stallone is a little bit bigger, but uh, those are mostly air from the steroids. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, because he's all. Uh, let's also be clear that you could obviously tell that uh, Stallone, big, big action man Stallone, is certainly shorter than Benjamin Bratt and definitely the same height as uh, Sandra Bullock. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they put like uh, stilts in his uh, in his boots, made him make him a little bit taller. Yeah, because he—I mean—he's looked tinier. He, he was definitely tinier in Cobra, but uh, you know, sure. Benjamin Brad is just looking down on this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but he has such a such a like calm and and kind demeanor. It's, it's amazing. I love I love Benjamin. Oh, yeah, Benjamin, Brad, Benjamin, Benjamin <laughs> Brad is just amazing in this. I find my I find my work deeply and satisfying. It's just like, oh, you're sweetheart. Yeah, <laughs> pat pat. Yeah. And Dennis Leary is in this movie as well. Oh, God, you know? yeah, because, okay, so Wesley Snipes has been super programmed while he's been in cryostasis to be used as a assassin against this, uh, against Dennis Leary's character, pretty much. Yeah, that's that's the that's the goal of uh, the person who unfreeze him, who will yes. reveal, uh, I guess, Dr. Raymond Cock... Oh, I was about to say it now. All right. Dr. Raymond right, Cocteau. <laughs> is it really hidden? Really? His guy no, is so really. clearly played the villain. By, I mean, played awesomely by Nigel Hawthorne. Yeah, Nigel Hawthorne kind of slumming in in this, but also clearly having a great time. Him and, uh, oh, what's his name? The kimono guy. Oh, uh, I forget. Oh, um, the guy from Modern Family, isn't it? Uh... Uh, Glenn, Glenn Shaddix as Associate Bob. Yeah, Associate Bob. That's his name in the credits. It's amazing. Associate Bob. Yeah, I, and watching Nigel Hawthorne, you know, the guy who played King George III in The Madness of King George, swishing around in a Komodo, shouting at, at Sylvester Stallone is amazing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. No, this that movie... guy has, like, gravitas. Oh, yeah. No, for sure. I mean, he's he's a classic actor. And uh, and then mm -hmm. you have Salome. <laughs> I don't know. I think it's you. Oh no! Everyone, everyone is everyone's out acting Stallone in this. It's great. Yeah, it's it's, it's literally like like you were saying. So Snipes is in a different movie. Stallone is in a different movie. Yep. <laughs> and then you have uh, the rest of the cast, pretty much knowing what kind of movie this is and acting accordingly. Yeah, because you have Stallone is clearly in just Rambo Part Nine. Yeah, with a little bit of flair with the Mamba Jamba. Yeah, I think Wesley Snipes is fighting Deadpool somewhere. Oh yeah, no. The, actually, you bring up a, a great point. If there's if there's gonna be a villain to a Deadpool movie, like if Deadpool Three ever happens, Wesley Snipes yes. needs to be that villain. Oh, he because does. Doesn't no, he? no one can match Ryan Reynolds. The way that Wesley Snipes can match him, and this movie is the ultimate uh, proof of that. Oh yeah, no, Wesley Snipes. Even now, Wesley Snipes. After watching Dolomite, you're damn right you can make him like a kingpin style villain. Yeah, 
for sure. I mean, he was he was in that damn show. I can't remember. It ran for like one season. It was terrible, but he was awesome in it. Um, Full House or something like that, where he's like, there's like a Las Vegas gambling thing. And he's he's uh, the pit manager wearing this awesome three piece suit, and it's like wow. okay, he looks so baller in that suit. It's like put him in that suit, give him a big cane, and have him beating someone to death. Make that a movie. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I don't really remember. Oh, Paper Empire? You mean? No, it was a TV show. It was like it ran for like one season. It was like. Uh, let me see or if I can find player, it because it, it's it was know. the player. That's the, the one. Player. Yes, the player as Mister Johnson. Oh my God! Yes, look at him. He looks amazing. And look at that. Look at him in that suit. Why is the white guy? Don't there, you though? think that can be a movie? Because he's the main character. What? No. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Mister Johnson, though. Philip. <laughs> yeah, no. Wesley... Mister Johnson is kind of like the um, the one running the show. And sending out little white boy to do missions. Okay. I didn't know this was going to be a video game, but sure. <laughs> oh, God. No, it, it really does. But, yeah, I mean, Wesley Snipes with this tight haircut and that three-piece tailored suit is so sick. And I'm like, why isn't this a thing? <laughs> uh, yes, one of the most underrated actors uh, of all time. He really is. So, yeah, so now uh, Salone gets in, in trouble again, uh, Spartan does, by you know being too gun-ho in the society, which is frowned upon, trying to stop uh, Simon Phoenix. And Yeah, but with lots and lots of gun violence. Yeah, which is frowned upon. And, and so Sandra Bullock pretty much gets the hots for him because of that. Like she even well, explains no, she it, gets like, the like, because they go to because they go to Taco Bell and he beats up homeless people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it was. It was that it was that toxic max masculinity <laughs> that turned her on. <laughs> yeah, no, no. They're like they're they're they they get invited out to dinner at Taco Bell because Taco Bell is the only all is the only company to have survived the franchise wars. <laughs> yeah. Oh sweet God, is that a movie I want? Yeah, I know, right? We miss so much. They should make That's a just movie. like how they're making a prequel John Wick series. They should make a prequel Demolition mm. Man series where we get to where we no. get to see the franchise wars. Just call it the franchise wars. It's an awesome title. Yes. <laughs> dun 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 dun. And I want the Taco franchise Bell wars. <laughs> yes. Pizza Hut. They do a merger. And you know, <laughs> that's how they take over the French. Oh God, yeah, <laughs> that's how they win. Yeah, so the oh God, the thing we were talking about earlier is that the alternative cut of this, they have redubbed all the dialogue for Taco Bell to say Pizza Hut and digitally inserted Pizza Hut logos, and they've ADR'd it so that you have Schwarzenegger clearly saying the words Taco Bell, but the sound is saying Pizza Hut. Yeah. And it sounds almost like a different person. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, it's, it's like, so I don't know if it, I don't think it's him. Yeah. Uh, it's but, like they uh, got a producer in to do a Stallone impression. Yeah, pretty much. That's uh, that's about that's about as good as you're going to get it. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, and, uh, and yeah, so Taco Bell is the way to go. And so, yeah, yeah, he beats up a bunch of homeless people. Sandra Bullock falls in love with him. Uh, you know, or certainly gets. Um, what was it? She says she actually has a wonderful little like thing where like they get back to her place and uh, it's like as you well know, there is a documented relationship between uh, sex and violence. It's like yes, all right. <laughs> which leads to the most unbelievable thing in cinema history. Uh, the 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 actual scene itself yes and then the dialogue that comes afterwards are oh, yes. just amazing pieces of cinema that need to be preserved forever i want to see that i want to see the little end speech here by stallone in calligraphy on like dried paper <laughs> <laughs> like yeah papyrus or something yeah papyrus like really, like, really <laughs> fancy like edwardian calligraphy <laughs> because it, yeah. it's so beautiful so we enter into VR sex pretty much. And uh, oh dear lord. 
the facial expressions. <laughs> and all you see, because, you know, he's covering his eyes, and you just see his lips. Oh, because sex is illegal now. <laughs> no, you're not, you're not covering his eyes. You're watching his face. He's just wearing a helmet. Oh, no, he's closing his eyes. That's what it is. He's like. closing, he's his, closing eyes, his, yeah. his eyes. He's doing the thing, because I just remember seeing the thing with the lips. Oh, and it's just, mm. oh, it sticks with you. Because <laughs> you're cutting back to Sandra Bullock, who's doing a really good job just kind of acting like she's, you know, um, she's in a diner she's and someone's going to order what she's having. <laughs> yes, that's a good reference. And then Another we're movie that I back... absolutely love. <laughs> oh, yes. And then we keep cutting back to Stallone, who looks like he might be drowning. <laughs> yeah, or having a seizure. I don't know. It's one or the other. It's just, oh my god, what are you... And the sound effects he's making. Ho, ho, holy shit. Oh, man. It's, it's such it a thing. It is a sight to behold. And, well, it's certainly a sight to be heard. And uh, <laughs> he freaks out because he wasn't expecting this. He was expecting to have actual sex, which he points out to uh, Sandra Bullock amazingly. Yes, because she says, "Why did why did you?" The line. <laughs> oh God! Because like he takes off the helmet and it's like she's like, "What? Did, why did you stop?" And he's like, "What do you mean? We were making love. I haven't even touched you yet." And she's like, "Oh, fluid transfers made made illegal." Yada yada yada. And he's like, "Wait, there's no kissing? Damn, I was a good <laughs> kisser." At which point he begins to describe amazing. It's kind of like, "Wait, well, how about we do it the old fashioned way?" You know, Bonin, the 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 horizontal mambo, the hunka chunka, <laughs> hunka chunka. I'm sorry, I need to do it better. I can do better than that. It's kind of like, how about we do it the old-fashioned way, Huxley? You know, Bonin, the horizontal mambo, the hunka chunka, and you're just sitting <laughs> oh, there going, God. "Holy shit." <laughs> To which uh, Sandra yeah. Bullock, to her credit, gives the perfect response. Ew! No! <laughs> uh, yes. Get away from me, you melty man! <laughs> which this is pre-melt, to be to be fair. <laughs> it is pre-melt, but he's still a little bit strokey looking. But um, he's strokey looking. But yeah. <laughs> so he gets kicked out of her place and then goes to his room down the hall because apparently she procured him a domicile in her residency area. And, oh god, the way they speak. Fucking hell. Which leads to kind of the, like, the least expected part of the movie, which is the accident, like, the wrong number. Because uh, he, he, he's he got a disc from Huxley, which is something to do with the plot and nobody cares. And before he gets to put it on, some naked woman calls him on video phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then she, you remember she, this? She acts so nonchalant, and then all of a sudden she sees him. And she's like, "Oh, wrong number. Whoops." <laughs> oh hi, Dave. Oh, oh hi, Mark. Oh, sorry, wrong number. And <laughs> Stallone does the same thing we do, which we just stop and go, Whoa, "What?" <laughs> and then the movie the moves on. It has nothing to do with anything. Yeah, it's just a scene put there for for shits and giggles, apparently. <laughs> Yeah, you can almost hear the thing where it's kind of like, all right, Sandra Bullock refuses to do nudity. Well, <laughs> hmm, we need we need, we need views. <laughs> this movie is going to sell. Yeah, we, on we, 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 we this needs to be on cable. We need to do something here, people. Come on, <laughs> come on, somebody think of something. Oh God. And uh, yeah, no, and it turns out, yeah, we figure out uh, Doctor Cocteau, Mister Evil, Fancy Founts. Clearly is in league somehow with with Snipes, and uh, he wants him to go and kill Mister Friendly, Mister Edgar Friendly yeah, again, uh, who is leading name. the homeless people. An amazing name. Oh Edgar yeah, Friendly. Who is leading the homeless people? Essentially, yeah. When yeah, Stallone yes. beat them up. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the, the scraps. I think they're called in this movie. Oh god. You know, it's just it's. You've seen these people a thousand times. You know exactly what this is. Yeah, they're the, they're the rebellion. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, rebel scum. And it, yeah. The rebel scum. Yeah. Oh, they, and they are. He, Nigel Hawthorne really is one severe makeup change away from emperor status. Yep. Pretty much. Had he only had I mean, the he, on him. <laughs> well, Jesus, he dresses like Palpatine before he goes full emperor. That's true. That is very true. He does have that, like, Just, uh, cape. 
tent like structure. <laughs> yeah, I think they shop at the same store, store certainly. Yeah, probably. Just uh, just right outside the galaxy. Welcome to, e- to to the left. Yeah, welcome to Evils Are Us. <laughs> Would you like for the traditional oh evil, or do you want to go for the new <laughs> evil? Slightly more colorful, but you know, <laughs> the Wesley Snipes. We have now a new we have a new robe where if you turn it inside out, it becomes black. <laughs> outside in, and it becomes red. Wow, oh, the two most evil colors. Amazing. And here is our special edition, which is looks flowery and pleasant, but then when someone inevitably reveals your plan, you can instantly go full evil. Just need a pinky, and you've got it done in no time. <laughs> special prize for you, you blew up the universe. <laughs> <laughs> the universe, not even like solar system, galaxy, no, 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 the universe, you blew it up. <laughs> our business is booming. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally. <laughs> Pun intended, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I'm remembering the time when you could go into a store and buy things now. But anyway. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> but yes, Dennis Leary has. I never expected to give you a flashback. That's true. Uh, Dennis Leary, as Edgar Friendly, has a pretty powerful and probably one of the best uh, monologues that come completely out of nowhere because this movie isn't really designed to be this way i guess like it's it's very off-putting mm. to see it because it doesn't really fit the movie but it's a really good monologue uh so yeah uh, it's, uh... which one is this oh yeah oh you mean that well because here's the thing dennis leary is a stand-up comedian and this is straight from his stand-up yeah pretty much it is ripped like line for line verbatim like yeah i want to eat jello while naked and reading playboy magazine and smoking cigarettes rubbing myself with bacon fat yeah. whatever it is it's like it's it's really like George Carlin light material. Uh, it's absolutely amazing. And just like a lot of things in this movie, catches you completely off guard. Yeah, because up until this point, he's been quite serious. It's kind of like, yeah, we, we they're not enough of us friendly. We need to go get the food. Well, we don't have a choice, Carl. He's like, he's leading the people. And now he goes into a stand-up routine. <laughs> and the camera just focuses on him. And that's it. <laughs> While he's yeah, doing this is routine. also the part where we see what happens. This is also the part where we see what happened to all the other people who are, like, all the other Mexican people who aren't Benjamin Bratt, because they're all down in the sewers. Apparently, yes. (laughs) Mexico went underground. Yeah, and Stallone buys a uh, burger from a woman wearing a Bolivian Cholita hat. Yes, and it's a rat burger. Apparently it tasted really good. A rat burger. (laughs) Yeah, and he, she, they're all speaking Spanish, and apparently he pays for the burger with a Rolex? Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's so sad and insulting. <laughs> it's so bad. Oh my god. It's like, okay! Uh. But yeah, and, and, and for some reason, like, I love the fact that they clearly were like, well, it, I think this was a contract negotiation with Stallone, because he's like, well, we need to have a god chase. It's like, well, Stallone, this is, they're all self-driving cars and everything. Yeah, but we need a start. We need a car chase. So in the basement, like in this sewer, they find an Oldsmobile. Yeah, which was, I think, the original Starsky and Hutch uh, car, right? Yeah, no, this is like a, a true, like, I can't remember what it's called, a 350 Oldsmobile or something. And it's yeah. like a proper old school American like, rider. Oldsmobile. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, yeah, the second you see this thing, you're like, okay, car chase, got it. It's in my schedule. I know that's booked. <laughs> Essentially, yes. <laughs> Thank you, and, movie. Uh, and it's not like a car chase that you'd see in like a Jason Bourne movie or not even Speed, which came out roughly around the same time. Mm. No, this car chase is pretty bog standard. <laughs> This is a this is a this is a stunt reel that they recast, pretty much. Yes, but it does. I have to say though, before we get there, there is a a moment where we get to see Wesley Snipes' assembled crew, where he has managed to defrost a bunch of people to help him out, including uh, now former governor. Uh, what's his name again? The dude who was governor of like uh, Montana or something. Oh. oh. You know who I'm talking about, right? Yeah, he has such a tiny role, though. Yeah, because he was like cut from it. From it. Like there was supposed to be more. Jesse Ventura. Jesse Ventura oh, is yeah. here. Jesse the body Ventura. Yeah, just laughing at things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
A real good callback to Predator. Oh god, it's great. He also he had no time to bleed and he had no time to do dialogue. <laughs> but they attempt oh, to god. assassinate Edgar Friendly. But it's my fate one of my favorite lines from Snipes where he looks down and he sees that Stallone is still alive and he goes, God damn, like a New York cockroach. Yeah. <laughs> I love that line. I love that line so much. <laughs> it's like, wow, thanks. Snipes, I don't know what oh, you're man. doing, man, but I love it. Do more. <laughs> that, that is such classic 90s Def Jam comedy kind of uh, kind of line. <laughs> like a New York cockroach. <laughs> yeah. God. I mean, this is the thing. He is, Stallone is doing the typical, like, you know, protagonist li- dialogue. I swear to God, I think Snipes is in a rap battle. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure he is. That's the kind of shade he's throwing. He's in a rap battle that involves some kind of kung fu, and <laughs> it's a whole oh, yeah. thing. One of my favorite little facts about this movie is that Wesley Snipes, who is a black belt, was punching and kicking so fast at Stallone that the camera couldn't pick it up, so they had to tell him to slow it down. Yeah, it's the same thing with uh, Bruce Lee. Yeah, the exactly. Twenty-four frames couldn't pick it up. <laughs> It's kind of like, God damn it. Just like a New York cockroach. Like a New York <laughs> <Too> cockroach. <fast. laughs> uh, oh, and it, I love his little like interlude. He has another great line here, which is kind of like, and he looks down, he sees it's Stallone and Leary in the same place. He's like, huh, must have done something right in the previous life. Can't imagine what that would have been. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. It's like, Wow, where is this dialogue coming from? I want to watch the movie you're in, man, because it's awesome. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, it's that's that's sort of the the thing with this movie, which is why I think it's such a cult classic. Uh, is because there are hints of like an incredible movie in there, one that's just absolutely you know batshit crazy. But then it's bogged down by this sort of standard formulaic action movie as well. Yeah, but I mean, that's the thing I think is so, kind of funny is that you you almost feel like this movie is made kind of all the interesting parts are being made underneath Stallone's nose. Like he signed yeah. on for a bog standard movie and there's all these interesting little elements that they've added and tried to hide from him. Yeah, probably by uh, Peter Lenkov and Robert Renault. Yes, Robert Renault. Boy, who that's are, a name. Who are who are the writers of uh, the movie? They probably just snuck a bunch of stuff under the table, which is why he seems so out of place. Because he's like, yeah, "I'm just I'm just doing Tango and Cash again." Oh, well. <laughs> well, I mean, you got to give co- credit to uh, Marco Brambilla because he's the one who like directed it, and. Uh, it's his first directing gig. It's like okay, like this guy had That's no history. Actually, in that case, yeah, and he's done nothing since except Dinotopia the miniseries. What? Oh, I <laughs> wish I was kidding. I'm not joking. What is that? I have no what idea. What is Dino- Dinotopia? Dinotopia. After a plane crash, two opposing half brothers find themselves on an amazing lost island where enlightened pacifist humans. And intelligent talking dinosaurs have created a utopian medieval society. Jesus Holy Christ. Mary, what is how have I never how heard have of I not this? Seen this? Starring David Thu- Thulas? The guy who who's played that? uh oh my god, he's the guy who's in Harry Potter. He's the guy who plays the bad guy in Wonder Woman. Oh yes. Him. Wow. What? Is this show anyway? This tangent aside, tangent like aside, an interesting, interesting show. We recommend to our viewers, even though we haven't seen it. Yes, <laughs> it we, sounds amazing. I'm sorry, a utopian society with talking dinosaurs. Watch it. <laughs> Done. Yes. <laughs> Done. <laughs> anyway, we are we are speeding towards the end of the movie, as it, as is the movie itself, because there, we've had our bog standard chase sequence, which ends up with. Uh, <laughs> Stallone wrapped up in some kind of styrofoam cannoli. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's apparently how what the crash test unexpected. bags are now. Fair enough, movie. Fair enough. Whatever. And, <laughs> yeah, whatever. And um, <laughs> it just throws end- one last quirky thing in there. <laughs> oh, God. And that's when he decides he's going to knock out Huxley after she does some Jackie Chan kicks, and then he's going to go and fight Wesley Snipes at a cryo prison. And yeah. it it goes 
kind of nuts. That this last action scene is worth watching. Yeah, I so much so that I kind of don't want to spoil it. Yeah, me neither. Um, I'm not gonna say the. Dem- I'm not gonna say I'm how gonna, it ends. Well, I. Well, yeah. Okay. Sure. Let me just ask you this then. Yes, go for Do it. Do you feel like Wesley Snipes can come back for the sequel? I know that he's in there. They want him to. That's part of yeah. the recent news. <laughs> yeah, they want him to. Which, given how it ends, <laughs> I don't know how they're gonna pull it off. But uh, you know, it'll be interesting. It's the future. Sure. Clone him. Probably, yeah, and that's probably what's yeah, gonna instigate the not? need to bring back Stallone's character. Something like that. Why not? Come on, it'll be funny. It also has one of my, another one of those amazing uh, Snipes lines, which is. I'm going to use my little pinky and drop your ass down and fry your ass like a chicken. <laughs> uh, again, just, no, I don't know no what one. movie. He... <laughs> like, no one can pull this off other than him. It's just so, such a great line delivery. You, it's you amazing. Got, you <laughs> got to imagine, considering the rest of the dialogue, that these are his own lines. I can't imagine they wrote yeah, this dialogue. Yeah, no. Like I said earlier, I I full heartedly believe that most of his lines were completely ad libbed by him. I do yeah, not just, think that those were written. No, they just put him in this like weird osh gosh bigosh like uh, dungaree thing and told him to let loose. Pretty much. <laughs> and boy, oh boy, uh, was sure that the right writers decision. didn't even know where it was going. <laughs> no, I think it was <laughs> no, the right decision. Like, yeah, go, go for it. Why not? <laughs> We managed to get Wesley Snipes in this movie. Let him do whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. What an amazing movie. I love it. And, yeah, so it ends with uh, Phoenix defeated. Yeah, obviously. Uh, Stallone uh, is the victor. And, and uh, he, go he, kisses, he kisses he, he kisses Huxley, and she asks if all fluid transfers are this much fun. Great yeah, line. Okay. Right. <laughs> And then he wants to, okay, Set we, we jumped off. over it. We, we jumped over it because it's something that is talked about a lot in regards to this movie, which is the three seashells. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, apparently in the future, there's no more toilet paper. Uh, what you have are three about fist sized uh, in terms of uh, area. Uh, metal- mm. Metallic seashells that they use to wipe and nobody, their butts. Yeah. Somehow, it's never explained. Are they buttons? Do you use them? Nobody knows. Yeah. Uh, but uh, at the end of the movie, he like that's the last question they end on. What is it with the three seashells? Yeah, <laughs> which is a, which is a great thing because it kind of they set it up quite well in the movie, and that's yeah. a really nice payoff. <laughs> which is like, what is up with those three <laughs> seashells? Honestly. Yeah. No, because you you are wondering this at the time of the movie because you're like, well, he clearly like. But it also brings up a question. He hasn't had toilet paper. He's been several days in this world. What has he been doing? His body is running at maximum efficiency. You see, he's not... He's absorbing everything, and he doesn't have to poop anything out. <laughs> no, he's using it in his knitting. <laughs> because Wesley yeah, Snipes... Was, looked, yeah. <laughs> that's something. <laughs> Wesley Snipes was programmed to be a super soldier. Sylvester Stallone was programmed to be a seamstress. Yeah, because, you know, that's what they do in the future. They can just program you to be a pacifist, which didn't work too well. Yeah, uh, no. But, but yeah. Phoenix! He still creates a lot of, a lot of mayhem and, uh, and destruction. Oh, no. And, so uh, yeah, and I don't remember. Does he actually go back into cryosleep? They don't or say. He, he, stay did, with he literally just walk into the walk into the credits. Yeah, all right. There's there's like some kind of line of like, yeah, you got to get a bit dirty, you got to get it a, a bit clean. I have now killed the, the leader of the society is dead cuz Jesse Ventura threw him into a fireplace. Yada yada yada. Because of course you do that. I mean, why wouldn't you do that? Oh, and, yeah. Uh, and which, yeah, which is Larry another amazing line, over, right? Which is another amazing line because you have uh <laughs> you have Wesley Snipes wanting to shoot Nigel Hawthorne and he can't do it. So he gets someone else to do it and he says, "That's who you remind me of." An evil Mr. Rogers. <laughs> oh, God. It's like, oh, yeah. thank you, Wesley. You're great. Uh, and oh, and that yeah. was never made more relevant than now with oh. uh, the Tom Hanks movie being out. Oh, while. yeah, it's true. Yeah. And apparently, apparently very good. Man 2, 
Yeah, I haven't watched it either. Uh, but Demolition Man 2 is going to jump even further into the future. That's so, what they're saying. That's what they're saying. So this is going to be uh, it's going to be an interesting one. I hope that Sandra Bullock comes back. I know that she's only ever done two sequels. Okay. Uh, which was Miss Congeniality 2 and Speed, and Speed 2. 2. Yeah, Speed 2 and Mistake. Both of which did Yeah, both of which did just bombed in the box office. Yes. So I don't know if she's ever going to do a sequel, but if if there was ever a time, make it now. <laughs> we need you in well, this movie. We, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what we can do. I know how to get her on board. What you do is that you make uh Wesley Snipes, a character who needs to be empowered somehow by a white teacher. And then you cast Sandra Bullock, and she's on board for that movie. She she will play that movie. There might be another Oscar in it. For, yeah. There might be another Oscar in it for her. Her teaching Wesley Snipes how to be a fighter again or something. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <clears throat> and, Wouldn't that and, be great? Know, Wesley Snipes is not good. Oh yeah, Benjamin yeah, Bratt will do it. Benjamin Salon. Bratt will work for nothing. Yeah, and we'll bring back Benjamin Bratt and make him the villain. Oh, because why not? <laughs> hey, why not? He's he can do a villain. I've seen him do good work. Yeah, I've seen him do good work also. Uh, oh, um, so yeah, in yeah, case that it was, was yeah, in demolition man. In case it wasn't clear, this movie rocks. Watch it. Oh, yeah. No, both of us I mean, highly recommend this movie. It is a cult classic for good reason. Yeah, and it, I, is, I don't... it is an action movie like very few others out there. Yeah, and I don't feel we've spoiled. Because I feel that this movie just, you watch it and it is so unbelievable. Nothing we can do will actually do justice to the little moments. This is just a big advert. Just yeah, watch it's... this movie in big banner. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, also being the most elaborate and expensive Taco Bell commercial adding to it being <laughs> a big advert. Uh, oh, but, well, but <laughs> completely. The franchise war, man. The franchise war. Franchise wars. We need that. We need that so badly. But uh, Right but now, yeah. Amazon is winning the franchise war. Help Taco Bell. Oh, good God. <laughs> Damn you. So next next time, it's not going to be screaming Phoenix at the beginning. It's going to be screaming Bezos. Bezos! Bezos! That works really well, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't that be Jeff great? Bezos be the villain. You find out that secretly Wesley Snipes is running the is actually the like wearing a Jeff Bezos mask, and that's why he's bald. <laughs> oh my god, we're doing white face. It's, like it's like a Scooby Doo thing. He rips off this like silicon mask, like it's Mission Impossible, and it's actually been Wesley Snipes all along. Yeah, and it's like I would have uh, would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you, pesky Stallone. <laughs> pesky Stallones have two dual role, two Stallones. Oh, one yeah, D age one if you're gonna clone. Oh yeah, Gemini man style. <laughs> gonna, Gemini, gonna come stuff. on! <laughs> this movie is sounding amazing. Do it. <laughs> this movie is sounding amazing, and the budget is gonna be through the roof. But it sounds amazing. <laughs> come on, this could be the next great thing. You can do it in like 250 frames per second or something to make you feel better. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> that's that's a. Uh, well, Gemini man was released in 120. Really? And it was terrible. Yeah, oh. it was. It was like you could watch it in like six cinemas in the world, and nobody liked it. Yeah, because they they tried that with the Hobbit movies. They did the forty eight frames, and it just felt like a soap opera. It's got that. No, soap I'm opera. telling you, they did a hundred and twenty for uh, Gemini Man. That's insane. Why would they even attempt that? That's bizarre. I have no idea. No I clue. Mean, it was awful. God. Uh I mean, films. I saw a sample of it. Four frames for a reason. Yep, it's the it's it is the film look. There's a reason. Don't mess with it. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. No. This is a strong recommend. I love this movie. It is one of my favorite kind of guilty pleasure action movies because it is ultra silly and yet actually not dumb. Yeah, it's surprisingly smart. For yeah, there's a lot of fun stuff happening here. Yeah, no. And I actually, like you were saying, we haven't spoiled it. Well, you can't because Wesley Snipes' performance alone is rewatchable every time. Oh, yeah. Every it time will, I watch this. It will be, yeah, it's amazing every single time you watch it. And he always has little things that catches me off guard, like him just at one point in the film, 
apropos of nothing, when taunting someone, gets down, like, leans forward, looks the guy in the eye and goes, Yoo-hoo! <laughs> and you're like, wow, Wesley, what are you doing? But I love it. <laughs> what are you on? And give me some. That's yeah, please. <laughs> These days, give me some. <laughs> Uh, and, right. uh, speaking of the three seashells, they did mm. explain it at one point. I think Salone explained it at one point. Oh, I please think. don't go into it because it's terrible. It's um, awful. Are you are you sure? Because you know I'm really itching to talk about it. <laughs> oh God, do it. Okay, we'll be be over here. So, so apparently, so apparently, you hold two of the seashells like chopsticks. Oh God, no! You you scoop the remainder of your poop <laughs> out with it. And then you use the last seashell as a final swoosh. For reasons that I don't know, apparently the future decided to go medieval Europe style on this. Uh, good for them. <laughs> I mean, I would expect at the very least like a bidet or something. Like that makes sense. But seashells, Anything metallic else. seashells of all things. Oh god, they look terrible, don't they? <laughs> oh, at least the edges are smooth. <laughs> we hope so. We don't know what the underside looks like. We hope yeah, that's true. We hope the edges are smooth, because otherwise, oh my god. It's like wiping your ass with a, a tin can. It's a harsh place. Oh god, no. <laughs> I don't even want to think about that. Oh, I just had me a can of beans, now I'm going to take care of the other end. <laughs> oh. All right. Oh, I, think, all right, I think that's so... a good note to end on, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Final verdicts? Do we even need to do final verdicts? <laughs> Final, ver final verdict, Simon Phoenix. Oh, yeah. Phoenix! Simon, Simon says watch this movie. Yeah, I'll, g I'll give it 12 Phoenix out of, uh, I don't know, uh, 6 John Spartan. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I think I'm leaning towards a uh, 25 yoo-hoos out of 5 boggles. <laughs> How many uh, hunka chunkas do you give it out of out of oh, the God, horizontal? No, I, mambo? I, I, <laughs> oh no, I don't want a hunka chunka, nor do I want a mambo. Not not with him, not with that. No, <laughs> not with that. <laughs> maybe with snipes. Not 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 with Melty. No. Yeah, yeah, sure. Maybe with snipes. Maybe he has. He he sure has enough charisma to convince me. Oh, he looks like a million dollars in this. It's amazing. And imagine that with a three piece suit. Oh, oh and I have I've seen it. I it's need amazing. To watch that show. I need to we need watch to watch show. it. This move, someone needs to make that in a, into a movie. That look is too good to waste. Mm. All right. So All I've right. been Richard Herring, and I've been Abdullah Crowley. Oh wait, before we we do that, uh, where mm. can they reach us? Oh yeah, no, I'm going. I'm getting there. I'm getting there, buddy. So uh, if you want to contact us with any commentaries, criticisms, whatever, we are at siteonscreen at gmail dot com. We are, yeah, uh, yeah, we're on pretty much any major podcast uh, distributor: uh, yeah. iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, SoundCloud, even YouTube. And YouTube. SoundCloud. Yes, yep, we're all on there. And uh, we, if you want to support us, we are at Patreon.com/slash Sight on Screen. And yeah, I mean, yeah. but the best thing you can always do for the show: tell somebody about it, spread it with a friend, let somebody know that we're out here trying to do our best in these trying times. Huh? Yes. And thank you so much for listening, not watching, because I always mix those two. Yeah, thank no, you so no, much for listening. Always. And uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I've been of Lacrawi. I've been Richard Herring. Phoenix! <laughs>